A lot of these girls were kind of amazed by the big audience and the bright lights. I'm not like everybody else. No one in this tournament has been more dominating than Shayna Baszler. Using that elbow and her amazing heart. Kyrie's reputation has preceded her. There has been so much buzz that it is her time. I could give a crap if the fans hate me. I'm here to win the tournament. You see that smile on her face? She likes a good fight. If people don't know who they should put their money on, well, they're going to lose a lot of money. History will be made tonight. Who will be remembered as the winner of the inaugural May Young Classic? We are about to find out right now. You know, and we all have our 15 minutes of fame, and I'd like to take a couple of my 15 minutes to talk about the rights and the wrongs in the world of professional wrestling. This match is for the ECW World Heavyweight Championship! It's been a week, and well, I guess a little less than a week, but this is the week of the May Young Classic Finals. You've had time to watch it, you have time to absorb everything that's going on, you've had time to enjoy the match, the final match of the series. Hello, this is Mr. Green. You are listening to the WPN's Rights and Wrongs of Pro Wrestling, and we have made it past we have concluded the uh the may young classic in its entirety and we have ourselves a winner uh coincidentally it is the winner that i pulled for and the uh when i put my brackets out there you can go on to uh instagram and facebook and, and check the check my bracketing out of uh, how much i got right how much i got wrong uh I had a couple of people shoot me, you know, the one shots like I think this this person's gonna win or that person's gonna win. You know, I really wish I was, had committed the way that I committed. I put in the bracket from start to finish, and I did that solely because I am on this podcast, and I uh, I didn't want anybody to say that. Well, I changed my mind, or I I said something different, or went back on my word, or whatever the case may be. So I, I made sure to fill it out from start to finish that before the tournament started, when the names were released, and uh, I stuck to it. And my prediction was correct. Kyrie Sane uh, cleaned up in the tournament. She went. She went from uh, one end to the next as the only representative of Japan, and she uh, represented the country well. As she did walk out the uh, the May Young Classic winner. We're going to talk about. Uh, the match in and of itself, and uh, you know, a couple of things surrounding that. Uh, you know, of course, they, they they have a few little side shots and stories, and I'm sure that they they'll get to eventually, because uh, you know that's how the WWE does. But the first thing I, I need to say is uh, thank goodness that crowd was into it, because that was one of the concerns, not just by myself, but I, I've heard a couple of people uh, mention that. Now, one of the things that really messes up a product on TV, at least, is when the crowd is dead and they're not into it, they're not paying attention, they don't care, you know. They and uh, considering that the uh, the classic took place, I want to say after the SmackDown Live, uh, it, it was a very real possibility that that crowd could have been dead. But uh, I guess one of the other things was is that that was taking place in Las Vegas, so. Um, that being is on the west coast and in the afternoon opposed to 10 o'clock at night so that might have had a little bit of something to you know you know they, there might have been just a little bit more energy left in the people even though it was a long show it you know it, you not quite as drained at say i guess if it's 10 o'clock here we subscribe subtract excuse me i'll get my 
butcher my words. Uh, what do we subtract? Three hours, I think. Is that how? Three or four? So it'd have been. It should have been seven, six or seven. I'm, I don't want to say seven o'clock. I think it was three hours. Three hours difference. So you know, it, that's the, that's still the evening. You, you still got some life in you, and that crowd showed. You know, they were into it. They were paying attention to what was going on, and they seemed to know the competitors. The WWE did a great job of, of kind of uh, setting the table for what was going on that that evening. Uh, and it, more importantly, I guess this kind of branches over to the next thing. Uh, this, they treated it as a big deal. That I was really, really proud of and and kind of amazed by is that they gave this so much uh hype probably is the wrong word but they gave it such a platform and, and they treated it with such prestige that i mean how could you not become excited over the course of watching it i mean that so you look out there i mean first you know I don't remember them showing them until the end, but you, first you know there's a Triple H and a Steph McMahon and a Sarah Motto in the crowd. But they also had, uh, you know, a Lundra Blaze out there, which was I thought that was nice. You know, one of the perennial women's champions from, she, she was basically the uh, women's champion of the new generation era. They had uh, Dana Warrior, who's been a WWE ambassador over the uh, uh, last couple of, well, since the Warrior's death, basically. Uh, so the last couple of years, uh, Beth Phoenix, I believe, was out there also. They did the whole red carpet deal. They had some of the um, uh, the actresses from Glow, including uh, Kia Stevens, who they acknowledged as Kia Stevens, but we know her as uh, in WWE. We know her as Karma, and then the uh, TNA or Impact Wrestling or Global Force Wrestling or whatever it is that they're going under. She was awesome Kong or Amazing Kong on Independence. So, you know, it was just, it was a nice feeling all the way around that they would do and get this kind of stuff behind it. I mean, you know, that one of the last things I was expecting to see the cast of Glow, and I'm sure the WWE probably sent out, hey, look, you know, we're, we're on the West Coast. You know, here's your open invitation to come in and, and show up. And, and, and you do things like that just to give it a little bit more prestige underneath it. And, and quite frankly, I think it worked. It, it, it helped, and, and the series is is a, uh, is a nice, I don't want to say companion piece, but it's nice to have representatives of a, quote, all-women's wrestling show show up as something that is supposed to be a big deal for women's wrestling. So it, so it all connects. It works out. And by the way, if you haven't uh, watched the series of GLOW or you haven't heard the review for GLOW at this stage or at this point, uh, I'm going to suggest that you go into some of the past episodes that are listed on in uh, the podcast, that being either on uh, podbean.com, just search out WPN and it'll come up for our wrestling show. Or you can go to YouTube and you can go Women's Pro Wrestling Network and you'll see it there. So if you haven't listened to the uh, review for GLOW Season 1, uh, go go and check that out. And that, that there is another season that has been approved, by the way. So you had that, and you had uh, uh, who else showed up? That some of the, some of the participants of the May Young Classic showed up, and they you know they were all dressed up and smiles and ready to go and ready to watch this thing. I think Tony Storm, Piper Niven, um, uh, Mercedes was out there. Everybody was looking good. It was out there in the front row, uh, and then you had the the WWE superstars, the uh, ladies of the the roster, kind of show up. Uh, you had uh, Charlotte Flair. Who was there? You had Becky Lynch. You had uh, uh, Bailey. Again, the the, the four ho- horse women of wrestling. They showed up, but you can't have the four horse women of wrestling show up and not have the four four horse women of MMA. So they were there as well. And we already talked about. And I'll get back into it uh, just what, briefly. We already talked about the the seeds being planted of a four horse women versus four horse women incident or situation. That could take place on WWE soil. Uh, Rousey, Baszler, Duke. Uh, I, you know, I always forget the last one. <laughs> That's terrible that I that I forget the last one. But uh, yeah, they they all represented it uh, right there on the front row. Of course, there to cheer on their 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 girl. They were there to cheer on Baszler and and her attempt to win that trophy and be the first uh, Mae Young Classic winner. 
Uh, <clears throat> so you, so it was really stacked. It was stacked all the way around. Jim Ross and uh, Lita uh, were introduced. He had Renee Young uh, out there. She she did a little intro for for the um, the final match. Um, and I think I'm, I'm missing. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. One of the other Lillian Garcia, who we know has uh, essentially parted ways with the company, but she does stay out on the West Coast, and they asked her to come out and and do the the introductions for the final match, and I thought that was a nice touch. Little things like that give it just that much more oomph. I mean, you know, it was kind of like back in the day when you had uh, you had WCW. And yeah, they had the in-house announcer. They they had uh, David Penzer or G- Capetta or something like that. You know, one one of those guys that was there day to day who would do the the in-ring announcer. But when it was a big deal, they went out and forked out the money. And they got Michael Buffer, and it felt a little bigger. I mean, I, I know it doesn't necessarily change the context of the match, and it doesn't you know it, it doesn't add anything to it bell to bell. But the 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 wrapping, the surroundings that they added to it was was all good, and it was outside of Full Sail. Not that I'm dismissing Full Sail. Full Sail was a great audience for that entire tournament. They they helped make that show. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that they're part of the cast or anything like that, but them being knowledgeable about the competitors, them being excited, them being you know cheering everybody. Yeah, you know, we want Gat Jazzy and all that stuff like that. Them doing those things made it that much better. And so I don't want to knock Full Sail, but I, I got to go back to the Cryhead Vegas again. They were into it. They they gave a lot to uh, uh, to this match. So uh, it, it is worth the watch. That that much is very evident. And before I go to to the finals, uh, I want to say that there's also because I didn't talk about it before. There's also a six woman tag match that is uh, on the WWE Network. Uh, consisting of some of the uh, the uh, the eliminated competitors, uh, where we, we had uh, who Tessa Blanchard, Jazzy Gabbert, who who got a huge reaction. See, I mean that 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 crowd went right off into "We want Jazzy, we want Jazzy." Um, who are they taking? I, you know, I I should have put this down in my notes, and I actually uh, made a little point of it. Um, uh, when I was looking at the show, but I but I away from it right now. My papers are away from me, so so if I'm, I'm forgetting competitors right now, I apologize. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the the end story there is uh, the crowd essentially did what they did for Cedric Alexander, in that they gave this monster ovation for for Jazzy, who we all know as the alpha female. Uh, and at the end of that, Triple H came out and essentially said, hey, you guys are <laughs> costing me money. Every time you do this, you cost me money, which is basically his way of saying that uh, I, I got to sign her now. And me signing her essentially is going to be you know, another contract, more money, this, that, and the other. So it, it's... Um, <laughs> It's looking good for Jazzy. I hope that she does get it, or at least that she gets a just you know just a little taste of that that whole WWE lifestyle just just for a moment. I mean, it doesn't appear as if um uh who's it? It doesn't appear as if somebody like Mercedes. It doesn't. I don't think that she is a uh, uh, going to be in or in the WWE side because she's already got other booking dates and i think she's going to rise and all that stuff like that she's going to do some training but the same way i say about her is the same way i say about the rest of these girls that are on the independence if uh if you haven't had them booked ahead of this now <laughs> then man you, you're gonna you're gonna pay some money to catch them on the next go round because I, I can tell you now that i'm sure the price of these girls are are going to go sky high. So even if Jazzy Gabbard goes back to the independents, uh, she's going to be uh, something to to, uh, to 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 get. You know, she's she's going to be some. She's going to cost some some money. So I, I think that's a pretty safe bet to say. But anyway, underneath that, and when I uh, when it comes back to me, I'll I'll put that out. Um, 
that being the participants of the six woman tag, I, I, it really escapes me right now. It, it's going to take me a second. Uh, th- there was a list of alternates that got uh, announced at some point. Um, that if somebody were injured, because you know the WWE always has a backup plan. If, if somebody was not able to participate in the tournament, they had a, a, a list of names that were set to go. Uh, one of them was somebody that I predicted at the beginning, and, and I'm kind of amazed that she wasn't actually in it. That was Deanna Perazzo. She was listed as one of the uh, official alternates for anybody that was in it, injured. Excuse me. Uh, another one was former NWA Women's World Champion Barbie Hayden, which is uh, which I actually have to say I did not list her. I for, I'd forgotten. I, I didn't think that she would be eligible, quite frankly. Uh, I, I, I thought they, they might have overlooked her. Even though she was a world's champion and she's a really good wrestler and a great personality, I don't know if she had enough exposure for the WWE to have taken in. Glad I'm wrong about that. Uh, Jessica James also, and, and I guess I should say Peraza would have would have represented Italy. Uh, Jessica James and Barbie Hayden, Jessica James being the other alternate, they both would have represented um, the United States. Uh, Lady Tapa, who I guess if you are a real wrestling aficionado or um, uh, fan of women's wrestling, that's probably the, what I should be saying. <clears throat> uh, she would have represented Tonga, which, I mean, come on, that's that's not a, a big surprise. And uh, Nicole Matthews, uh, she would have been coming in and she would have represented Canada. So that, and that would have been interesting. That, that, that would have been some more uh, shimmer representative coming into the the whole thing i i guess it she comes in or she would have come in as one half of or formerly one half of the canadian ninjas with uh porter perez who who has since retired from active competition which is which is a shame you know i i think it would have been great to uh have perez in there because she she was a really great personality and uh it it's one of those bad timing things. I mean, how, how many ladies can we actually say that about it? That it's so many of them that we have seen over the years uh, that have come in and left professional wrestling that were really good at uh, their their job or you know good at their vocation, but they just never had the opportunity. And now you have um, the 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 Mae Young Classic come around, and the opportunity is there, and some of them are too hurt. To really take you know take part in that, so it's it's a shame, and I could probably name off quite a few. I mean, you know, uh, for me personally, I, I would go back to the definition of technician, Cindy Rogers. I, I would have loved to have seen her uh, take take that on, but you know, she she got hurt a long time ago, as I, as did Porter Perez. So. It's a shame that these things have, but I guess better late than never. Uh, the six women that I was thinking about, uh, sorry, sorry got, let me just rewind here for a second. Tessa Blanchard, Jasmine Gabriel, and Kaylee Ray. That, that was, I couldn't think of that third, but it was Kaylee Ray who I, who I was having problems remembering. But uh, they were on one team, and they took on Tessa Blanchard, Wrestling's Wonder Woman, or she's the new Wrestling's Wonder Woman. Um, you can go back a couple of years and you, there's a different one. But Santana Garrett, Sarah Logan, formerly Crazy Mary Dobson, Marty Bell. Uh, good for Marty that she got a second chance uh, because there, there was talk that she was supposed to have gone over Rachel Evers, but they changed it mid-match. I, I haven't gone back and watched the match to see did they make that call in the middle of it or not. I'll have to do that. But, again, it was a good match, worth watching, but the clear story there is Jazzy Gabbard. Jazzy Gabbard is the one that uh, that the fans really took to. They they really enjoyed. They really uh, started voicing their opinion about giving giving her a shot. So I expect to see Jazzy show up on uh, SmackDown Live or Monday Night Raw or or NXT one one of those in the near future. So we go back to the actual uh, tournament, which is the uh, Mae Young Classic. And I have to say, of all the things that I uh, named about it earlier, the participants, the the, the wrappings, the, uh, the 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 guests, the red carpet treatment, all of those things were great. But I will say, it all amounted to the same thing. And it's it's uh, I'm a borrow a phrase from Paul Heyman in the ECW uh, DVD that was released a while ago when he was talking about Taz. 
uh, I like the big fight feel. And this was a big fight feel. It felt like it was important. And I don't think you could have asked for a better situation in terms of the look, the feel, uh, and, and even how the match went. And I say that considering that Baszler really isn't all that experienced as a pro wrestler. I mean, it, it's... Uh, it's a, um, a given that she's she's a, a, a bit competitor as far as the uh, MMA and just you know athletics in general. Uh, I mean she's been competing for a long period of time, and I don't think that that can be frowned upon. But she has not been performing, and I say that you know <laughs> purposely between competing and performance. She hasn't. You know, been doing that as a uh, professional wrestler for an excessively long period of time. In fact, I would say when she started in uh, 2015. So well, she's literally like what a, a year and some change. You know, I said, well, no, I mean, it's, I shouldn't say that because we're gonna we're gonna count the full 16. I guess. 2017 is over, or pretty much over. So, so let's just say best case scenario, she's two years. I was gonna say a year and some change, like you know maybe eight nine months or so on and so forth. But she, but she's essentially two years in. Okay, so that's not a lot, you know. And you, anybody that's listening to this knows what I'm talking about. I know you could go and you probably looked at the independent circuit and you seen some girls that have been in there for two years and aren't that good. Uh, Santa has been under the learning tree of uh, of uh, the girls on the independents. Specifically, you would say uh, uh, the first person that should probably give her some, some or she should probably give some credit to is Chili and Melissa. I think she was one of the first people to give her a, a good match. Uh, Nicole Matthews, uh, certainly Mercedes Martinez. So, you know, she's had a, a lot of really top name talent that she's gone against. And she's she's probably learned a, a, a great deal having been around and wrestled with and all that stuff. I know she's trained by uh, Josh Barnett, and I think Mercedes has something to do with her training as well. So that, that probably goes back to that whole thing in the, um, the semifinals where it was the student against the teacher type deal. But Baszler, at the end of the day, has not really wrestled for a, a long period of time. But she did well in what she did. And they told a great story. The uh, finals was built on the story that Baszler had tore through the competition, that she had been choking people out left and right. And she, she was just the, the woman to beat as far as the tournament was uh, concerned. Uh, Sane was looked at as the the lovable underdog and that she was fighting an uphill battle, but she wasn't going to quit. And that is what they went into this thing with. And they told a great story, probably more on Sane's part to uh, kind of keep the, the, uh, the story uh, in ring wise on track. Uh, I would say that she, she probably was the, was the one that uh, really kind of pushed that, that through, but uh, get into the, uh, the end of the match. What happens here is that we are playing the the finisher game when when the the the, the match was going on. We we're looking at Kyrie saying she's trying to get the elbow in. I think she she had tried it on uh, two or three occasions, but uh, Basler was able to meet her and stop it. Of course, Basler is looking for the uh, the rear naked choke. Which at one point she was able to apply. She got the uh, choke applied, sat her down in the middle of the ring, and stretched her out. And it looked like, and, and I'm sure everybody in the audience was waiting for a tap. Ky Kyrie did such a good job of kind of selling that that choke. I mean, she looked like she was glass eyed and gone. I mean, uh, previous to this, uh, Basil was just beating her up. So, again, that goes back into that whole underdog story. And, and you, you got to give them credit for telling that story. There's not a lot of a lot of people that can do a good job of telling the story in the ring. They did a great job of telling that story in the ring. No, you, you know, of course, JR and, and Lita are helping to uh, 
feed in the uh, the lyrics, if you will, as JR likes to call it. But they did a great job, bell to bell, uh, just kind of feeding us the story. So after getting, you know, bringing this back up to speed, after uh, Baszler had been beating up Kyrie Sane for so long, now she gets the, the choke in there, Sane's eyes are wide and they're glass eyed. But she starts nailing those ribs that she had worked on on Baszler earlier in the match as well. So they both started having these targets that they had drawn on each other. Baszler's was the rib and the chest. Uh, Kyrie Sane was just uh, the neck head uh, preparing for the choke. So, uh, but the fact that Sane was able to get the um, the ribs targeted gave her an out to that rear naked choke. So. Baszler was unable to hold it. She couldn't hold it any longer because Sane was driving elbow after elbow after elbow to get free of it, get free of the uh, the chokehold. Uh, we we push forward again. She's trying to get up and get that elbow. Uh, Baszler goes over and meets her for uh, the last time. She she knows that the elbow is the uh, coup de gras. She doesn't want to get hit with it. She's trying to stop it. She gets up onto the ropes, tries to meet her, but she is unable to to stop Kari from punching her off. But she does stop herself from falling to the mat totally. She hooks her legs and she grabs the ropes so that she's suspended. She, she's like suspended in her own self-inflicted tree of woe. But she's not all the way down. She's kind of like pulled up. So Sane sees this as uh, Basler is suspended. She leaps off the top rope, draws her feet right there into the chest and the ribs, the same target area that she had been working on so far in this, uh, in the turn, well, in, not the turn, but in this match. And she lays Baszler out, and now it's time for the elbow, which now has been named, uh, assumably by Jim Ross, as the insane elbow, which is, I guess, a play on her new WWE name. So she leaps off with a picture-perfect elbow, drives it right into the chest of uh, Shayna Baszler. One, two, three. Baszler is down. Sane wins. And she is the very first May Young Classic uh, winner, winning of the trophy and all that good stuff. So it is a great way for her to introduce herself into the WWE universe uh, by doing this. As we all know, she is a signed competitor in the WWE. She signed a three-year deal uh, after she left stardom. So this this is a great way for her to, to come in. I hope that she is able to continue on. I really hope that she goes to uh, NXT first. I don't want to see her go up to the main roster just yet. <laughs> I mean, she probably would do well and uh, have fun, but they just rotated Asuka out of NXT and, and uh, put her on the main roster. Uh, and then and Sane and, and Asuka probably would have a dynamic match, but I think that there's some life to be had in NXT first where the uh, the matches are probably going to get uh, a little bit more time. And, and I don't want her fed to a Charlotte or a Becky Lynch or Bailey just yet. I mean, because those three, they're, they're good wrestlers, but they're, they're all they're, they're kind of running the show as far as women's wrestling is concerned on the main roster. Now, and I want to see uh, Sane have her own kind of field of play for a little while. Uh, you know, if you feel differently, I mean, feel free to leave your, your comments below. I know some people uh, probably do want her to go up to the main roster. But it'd be interesting to see what they do with her. I'm, I'm, I'm pitching for it, NXT. Uh, I'm, I'm also interested to see what exactly they're going to do with some of these ladies that participated in the, the tournament all through. Your Mercedes Martinez, your uh, your Shanna Baszler, your uh, <coughs> uh, Savoy, uh, Candice LeRae, uh, Tony Storm, who, who may be signed right now, Piper Niven, and, and just a host of the other girls who were not signed into uh, WWE. It'd be interesting to see uh, whether uh, there, th th there's life for them. That, that's probably what I'm looking for. It's interesting to see whether there's life for them beyond uh, the, the, uh, the Mae Young Classic. Or, or life for them within WWE is probably the more accurate term. Uh, and I, I guess I should put it out there that uh, she already has made her NXT house show debut. So there it goes. Answer, answers my question. I didn't get down to my note here. 
Uh, that saying did make her NXT house show debut. Now, that's not to say that she will continue on NXT as a promotion, but she has wrestled for NXT. Uh, she teamed with Aaliyah and Dakota Kai to uh, take on the iconic duo of Billy Kay and Peyton Royce and Shanna Baszler. Uh, so Baszler may have some, uh, you know, she may have a limited run in NXT as well. Who, who knows? Uh, I know they already have a, a MMA style uh, young lady that's up in, in uh, that promotion or in the developmental system. I, uh, Bernardo, I think is uh, how you pronounce her name. I might be pronouncing it incorrectly. But that, that might be that might be a little difficult because, you know, they try not to share gimmicks all that much. And if you got a Shayna Baszler there, then that I, that would kind of knock her out of the out of the loop. I mean, it's not like she's there right now. I haven't seen her in a while. But uh, if, if Baszler comes in, what do you do? Well, I guess time will tell. Anyway, so there we have it. That is the, the full of the Mae Young Classic. I, if you haven't had the opportunity to watch it, I would suggest that you go on and do all episodes are up, so you can watch this thing from start to finish. If you haven't seen any of it, you can watch this from start to finish and not have to wait for any time. Uh, it is very enjoyable. Yes, there are going to be some matches that's that's in there that I, you know, probably might not be a cup of tea. But I would say all in all, the matches are, have been superb. I enjoyed them. They were, they're definitely worth the watch. And uh, looking back... From every single match, eight episodes, one, well, I guess nine if we include the finals, uh, I would say that the single best match that I saw, Bianca Belair versus Kairi Sane, I think that that is the match that if you don't have, uh, if you haven't watched it and you haven't uh, even bothered to think about it, uh, or, or you skipped it because you didn't know who Bianca Belair was, uh, go there and watch that match. Uh, Belair is very surprising that they, they did well. I love to see the match again. I hope they, you know, get another opportunity against each other. Uh, I think that that was a a a surprise match. It kind of came out of the wood because, you know, you expected Tessa Blanchard. That first round, round match with uh, Kyrie was dynamic. Tessa Blanchard versus Kyrie it was it that was a great match and arguably the best. I mean, for my money, I like the Belair match, uh, but. Uh, Tessa Blanchard was no slouch either, but I think people walked into that knowing Tessa Blanchard was was good, and you expected it. Bianca Belair didn't have that kind of fanfare behind her, so what she did was just all shock, and uh, really, really good stuff. So if you haven't had the chance to watch it, go please do go back and watch that. That that should be uh, fun for you. So that's it. the uh, The tournament is over. You can go back and you can check out all the reviews. On our, our Podbean page or, and uh, or Podbean account, and go on uh, YouTube and listen to all past episodes as it pertains to the May Young Classic and beyond. We got interviews and matches and so on and so forth. If you haven't followed us on social media, uh, go on to uh, Facebook, give us a follow there, uh, on Twitter, WPN Wrestling. Instagram, WPN Wrestling, you can catch us on there as well. Uh, we got some good stuff going up. A new match just went up, by the way, if you're uh, listening to this. Uh, you can go and catch the four-woman championship match, which is a uh, really interesting view. I had the opportunity to uh, call that match for the promotion. That was uh, Crystal Rose, Brooklyn Creed, Pandora, and Stormy Lee, so you got uh, got some other girls that you can watch there. If you if you haven't had your fill of watching women's wrestling, we do have some that's provided for you. Uh, so you can go out and do that, and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't uh, done so already. And then when you subscribe, click the little bell so you get the notifications for all the things that we do. If you haven't gone on to Podbean for the uh, just the solid MP3 version of what I'm presenting right now, uh, go on to Podbean when the new episodes go up for us and you follow us. But when you uh, get that, it will shoot it directly to your phone. Just download the app and, and it'll come right on in and you can listen to the uh, the audio content as you're driving to work or you're working out or doing whatever it is that you're doing to make it that much more convenient for you. So we got a bunch and a bunch of free content available, hours and hours and hours of this stuff. So you can't beat that. And uh, if you haven't um, 
helped out the show by liking it or sharing it. Or I, I know some people have tried to give in monetarily, which I want to thank you for. That that's been great. I want to. I need to come up with some other uh, giveaway or or something that to kind of be a thank you. I, I'll be working on that. But uh, if you haven't done that, if you haven't clicked the PayPal, which is on our our uh, Facebook page, there's a link on our YouTube channel as well. If you haven't clicked one of those, then what you would need to do, just go and uh, share the video, share the audio, share that. Because if, if giving up monetarily isn't the thing that you are able to do, helping the show grow, helping it reach a new audience, helping it uh, get to more ears is always helpful and i appreciate those of you that have done it the wrestlers included i know some of them have done that for their interviews and so on and so forth and uh by the way we are working on new interviews for you and i will put this out there before i close because i know it's come up and somebody left a message for me uh, asking me to interview a particular wrestler uh that worked for the wow promotion uh some years ago and actually she works there now uh <clears throat> Uh, I'm working on that. I will, I will say that. But if you are listening for a comprehensive review of WOW, the best interview that I've done, and I'm not uh, knocking the other people because there are several people that I've interviewed that have uh, participated in WOW, but the best interview that I've done for the person who gave up the single most information as far as the WOW promotion, Women of Wrestling is concerned, is Riot. Uh, otherwise known as April Little John, she she just gave up a lot of the, the backstage stories, what it was like back in the day, uh, <laughs> how she was getting paid, what, all of that stuff. So if you if you really want a, a very comprehensible breakdown of what Wow was, what it was about, and and uh, you, you're just wanting or needing more information of, of the stuff that went on behind the scenes, because it's it's not a lot of that out there, and I'm really proud of that interview. Uh, I would say go and check that interview out. And the great companion piece to that would be the first interview that I did with Jungle Girl. So there you have it. And I know that's off topic of the Mayor Classic for those that tune in solely for that. But I just had to get that out. So thank you for everybody that has tuned in, downloaded, liked, shared, uh, donated, and subscribed. Thank you to all of you. I really appreciate it. And uh, your support is acknowledged. And uh, I want to say thank you to everybody that has even bother to attempt or listen so that's it that is the show be sure to check us out for the next go round. got more releases and more matches coming your way so until then we'll catch you guys later so long thank you for listening to the wpn's rights and wrongs of pro wrestling if you have questions or comments please contact us via our facebook or our youtube channel at the women's pro wrestling network if you're new to the wpn feel free to subscribe to our channel and like our page we appreciate your support. Thank you again for listening.